Greetings, pilgrims. Well met. I am Donna Prescott, author of the great American novel, The Graceland Tales. Uh, this video is entry number two of my virtual book promotion in the time of COVID, also known as Verbop in Talk. In entry number one, uh, the author, Donna Prescott, me, uh, read Dwight's tale from the Graceland Tales. As I started planning uh, this week's Verbop in Talk, I intended to discuss the general prologue to the Graceland Tales and characters. And then Elvis whispered in my ear, that I should start the fairy beginning, a very good play to start. Uh, so I changed my plan. Um, I'm going to do the uh, first part of a reading if I, when I was doing virtual readings, this is the way the reading would start. So I'm going to start with the opening 18 lines of Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. One that I prill with his sure risota, the draught of March hath pierced to the rota, and bothered every vein and speech liqueur, of which vertu and gendre is the fleur. One zay for zay with his suede braith, and spirit hoth in every halt and haith, the tondre crops, and the yangi sun, hoth in the rom, his half coursey ron, and small fowl is mocking mellow day, that sleep in all the with open ye. So pricketh him not to her in her carages, Van longing folk to go on pilgrimages, and palmeras for to sake and strong strands, to fern halwas, to coth in sundry lands, and specially from every sure's on of England to Canterbury they wand, the holy blissful martyr for to sake, that ham hath hoped one that they were sake. Um, basically, it's London. 14th century, it's the end of a long, cold winter in which people were uh, holed up in their homes with their spouses and their children and their extended family and their live animals and their dead animals and any pets they may have had. And you get the idea because we're going through something somewhat similar right now with the COVID quarantine. But uh, in their case, uh, the thaw came and they were able to get out and go places and do stuff again. And so t taking a pilgrimage was one of them. And in this case, the pilgrims met to go to Canterbury Cathedral to see the um, tomb of Sir Thomas of Becket. Fast forward about 700 years and you get a different set of pilgrims taking a different pilgrimage in the Graceland Tales. So here is the opening of uh, the Graceland Tales, the general prologue. When August with its heat beyond reason signals the end of the summer season, when children dread the end of vacation while parents welcome fall's liberation, when summer pastimes begin to wind down, water sports, baseball games, ice cream in town, when squirrels are fat, birds ready to migrate, zucchini run riot, gardens won't wait. When those barefoot days of summer tans fade, beach trips, camping trips, one final time made. When waning sunlight foreshadows the autumn, then folks long to cease one last vacation before custody parents reclaim children. When credit cards bear a heavy burden, then sundry folks head for sundry places. In the U.S., on Memphis, they set their gazes, the rock and roll blissful martyr to seek, to honor him in his alleged death week. And so it befalls that I come to Chicago's Union Station on 14 August, ready to head to Memphis and Graceland with 30 other pilgrims, plus 
the Graceland pilgrimage director, Teresa Turneau. Teresa arranged the train trip from Chicago to Memphis for this annual pilgrimage commemorating Elvis's alleged death on 16 August 1977 with a coach reserved just for our group. Personally, I believe that the king still lives, but I would rather not make the trip during the colder weather for the birthday celebrations in January. The schedule looks interesting, offering a Mississippi Delta Blues tour and a trip to the birthplace in Tupelo. It also includes a variety of optional events involving Elvis impersonators and people such as actors and musicians who worked with Elvis before he went incognito or died, as most people choose to believe. I think I will skip the candlelight vigil at the front gate of Graceland tomorrow night, though, since anyone who used to read the weekly world news before the internet put it out of the print business knows Elvis lives. So, all right. Um, with apologies to uh, Steve Goodman, uh, we're going to get our trip underway. I think that he wouldn't mind if he were here. Hopefully he's smiling down saying, you go, girl. to give you some idea of what was, you know, my intentions and such, um, or my hopes for what I would like to do. I intend for the novel to work on two levels. For readers unfamiliar with the Canterbury Tales, I hope that they are able to enjoy or appreciate the group of travelers, the issues which the tales reflect, and the camaraderie, or lack thereof, among the pilgrims. For readers familiar with the Canterbury Tales, I hope that they are able to pre appreciate how the issues that touch the lives of Chaucer's medieval group uh, still touch the lives of people in the 21st century, and how the spirit of Chaucer's tales can hold true in today's world. I did not intend to rewrite or completely adapt the Canterbury Tales, but to pull relevant aspects of medieval society forward to today's world at the end of the novel, the reader will find a key explaining the correlations between my tales and their medieval antecedents. Oh, there they are. Key to the correlations. That's fuzzy. Um, when friends and family heard I was writing a novel, frequently they asked if they were in it, sometimes with hope, sometimes with trepidation. My stock answer was that, for a price, I would either put them in or take them out, whichever they preferred. The real answer, however, is that most of these characters have their antecedents in Chaucer's Pilgrims. For instance, Chaucer's knight, squire, and yeoman become Senator Pam, Sandra the senator's daughter, and Adam the senator's aide. Even Renee, the transgender woman, has a counterpart in Chaucer's work. In the general prologue, uh, Chaucer, the narrator, says of the partner, I trow he were a gelding or a mare, meaning his gender identity is unclear. Human nature has hardly changed at all in the over 600 years since Chaucer wrote 
So it was easy to model my modern day pilgrims on Chaucer's medieval ones. All right, and the um, Rose the waitress uh, sends the pilgrimage going. Uh, here we go. Ready, set, go, men, go. I got a girl that I love. Giving season plods along, give a unique gift, a copy of the Graceland Tales, uh, to your Elvis loving, Chaucer loving bookworm friends, available through the Graceland Tales Facebook page uh, by clicking on the Shop Now button. Uh, you can also Google Graceland Tales, it's available through Amazon. Uh, the Graceland Tales is also available as an ebook, and again, you can Google there are a number of options for ebooks available. Uh, you may also contact me with any questions that you have through the Facebook page. And if you live near me, and uh, I can drop a copy of the book off uh, to save you the $3 shipping. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.